Okay. All right. Let me let me start. Uh, so let me. Uh, also, I have to be also in this video, no? That's not nice. Okay. So let me formally uh, introduce Gretchen Fernando. Gretchen Fernando uh, he is a PhD from uh, mainly in engineering uh, and computer science combined. He works at uh, Boeing Corporation in Seattle, and uh, he's actually originally from Sri Lanka, but he has been living there for many years. Uh, so, Gretchen, you can explain briefly about yourself and start your session. Yes. Thank you. All to you, Gretchen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jaminda. So, yeah. First of all, I my voice is a little bit uh, gone today. I had a cold, and uh, so uh, I'm uh, excuse me if you, if you uh, don't hear certain things. So, if you didn't hear anything, just. Uh, uh, or didn't understand, just um, you know, raise a question. I think Chaminda can repeat it to me. So, can you all hear me well? Yes. Okay. And uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The I mean, the PowerPoint I shared. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now uh, this is a brief. Uh, introduction about myself and uh, you know I, I went to uh, high school in uh, uh, Vikramshila Central College in Giriula and then uh, went to uh, engineering faculty in, in Peradeniya from uh, 91 to 95 and then actually I worked there from 95 to 97. Then in 1997 I came to US and uh, did my master's and PhD at Ohio University uh, in USA. And after that, I, <clears throat> I joined uh, 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 a university called West Virginia University uh, Tech uh, uh, as an assistant professor. And uh, so I taught uh, mainly engineering uh, and engineering technology classes over there. And then, uh, you know, after that, I decided to join industry. So in 2009, I joined Boeing uh, Corporation. Um, and since that time, I have been there. So at Boeing, I, you know, I, um, I get to work on a lot of interesting uh, projects, and uh, um, mainly I work in the uh, product data management area and uh, product lifecycle management. Um, so uh, and also, you know, I uh, since last year, I, I, I have been involved with. Uh, uh, data management in relation to uh, um, additive manufacturing or 3D printing, which is one of the topics we will be talking in this uh, discussion. So, um, so with that, I'm going to move into the presentation. So, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, I'm, this is basically some uh, historical background, background um, uh, about the uh, the industrial revolutions and and also. Um, and uh, before we talk about industrial revolutions, um, when you think about the, the economic activity in any society in the past and, or in the, in the present, there are three major uh, drivers that uh, the, the society operates, basically. Uh, so those three drivers are shown in this picture. So one is energy, and the, uh, the other one is the ways of transportation, and then the other one is the communication mechanism. So these three, uh, you know, uh, uh, commodities or, or sources are always required for a society to function. So uh, when you think about the, the industrial revolutions in the past, you can see that uh, the uh, these um, uh, the industrial revolutions have, you know, uh, taken place uh, around these uh, three. Uh, uh, major drivers like in in the first industrial revolution the uh, energy source was coal and then uh, the uh, the transportation mechanism was mainly you know steam powered uh, locomotives and then uh, the communication mechanism was the the printing press so and then when it came to uh, second industrial revolution <coughs> The uh, the energy source became the uh, the uh, the oil, and uh, the the 
the communication mechanism became the, the telephone and then the, the transportation uh, media or the transportation mechanism became the, uh, the internal combustion engine. Now, uh, so we know, uh, I mean, we are very familiar with this, all these three, of course. Now, um, um, with, with, you know, advancements in many uh, areas, now, now we are uh, like witnessing a, a, a third industrial revolution. And uh, so there, again, we have, uh, you know, the, those three uh, major forces uh, around, uh, around us. And, uh, but those, like, instead of oil, now we are, you know, uh, systematic, I mean, uh, not systematically, but um, slowly, actually. Now, still not, I, I shouldn't say systematically. In fact, that's what we should be doing. We are not replacing uh, green energy. I mean, we are not, re we are not replacing oil with green energy systematically, but, um, you know, in, in different parts of the world, different initiatives have taken place so that they can uh, replace the, uh, the oil as an energy source and then use uh, green energy sources like solar, you know, hydro, uh, hydropower and also uh, wind power and then other uh, green energy sources like uh, uh, geothermal and, and, and wave energy and so on. So there are so many research going on, of course, but it's still, uh, we are at a very early stage in terms of the green energy. Uh, you know, when you t when you consider the entire world, uh, so that still we we are we are facing major issues uh, by uh, the, by the usage of oil, and uh, uh, in other words, the the oil has the usage of oil has contributed to the the, uh, the global warming and uh, and the climate uh, crisis that we are facing today. So the 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 solution. Solution for that is green uh, in the world, uh, so that we can replace uh, oil um, step by step, and then pro probably in another 30, 40 years, uh, we can completely replace oil with uh, green energy sources. Then uh, <coughs> the the transportation mechanism is also uh, being replaced by many electric automobiles. Also, you know, we have been having the electric trains for quite some time, but the cars, most of the cars are still uh, internal combustion engines that use, uh, you know, oil or, or, or gasoline. So uh, uh, now, now you, are, you know, in, even in Sri Lanka, you see the electric uh, cars, but it's still, uh, at, you know, very low percentage, but it's picking up. Uh, here in the US, uh, we have a major automaker called Tesla, uh, where they, they are making only electric cars and very popular here. And, uh, and very expensive as well. So the, the usage is not that high, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's picking up. Um, so in the future, we will, uh, <clears throat> we will see more uh, usage of electric uh, vehicles. And then also uh, in this third industrial revolution, of course, the, our communication mechanism has become internet, uh, as we all know. And uh, uh, so around these three, things, the, the green energy, uh, electric transportation, and then uh, internet. So we have this third industrial revolution that is happening for, you know, you know the usage of these three uh, main forces, we, we have uh, seen the, the the manufacturing of uh, products and services uh, using uh, some techniques called digital uh, digital manufacturing, or we, we call it digital manufactured products and services. Um, and you know that I will talk about that a uh, little bit uh, next in in my in in my next slide. Now, before we talk about the digital manufacturing, now uh, all these three. Uh, <coughs> Uh, you know the, the the drivers are being supported by some uh, uh, some new platform called uh, uh, Internet of Things. That's again a sort of a buzzword uh, that you, you know all of you might have heard, of course. But uh, what it does is uh, all these devices that we have, like the, the the computers in the internet, and then the cars, and uh, and then energy sources, and everything uh, is connected. Through uh, uh, through an internet, uh, so not only computers, we can connect uh, 
uh, almost all the devices uh, to the internet in the in the future and that is also happening uh, you know today and the, even today there are millions of devices uh, connected to the internet um, and and we, we gather data uh, by using those uh, those devices so uh, the uh, uh, you know the internet of things is again it's not very new but about two three years old now and it, it's uh, picking its pace uh, quite faster than than we we think actually so now this is a very you know this is going to be a very uh, you know game changing uh, platform for for the world because uh, we will be able to you know uh, share data and, and and share ideas at a very faster pace uh, than we we couldn't even think uh, about 10 15 years ago so that's that's going to uh, you know um or, you know present us many opportunities as well as some you know major major challenges like in terms of security and and and, and so many other from you know uh, so many other challenges so we'll talk about those a little bit later uh, so 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 far is there any questions uh, from the the things that i discussed uh, do you want to add anything well, you can go ahead. okay good <clears throat> So, um, so as I mentioned here, the so we are we are you know we we, we have been using the digital manufacturing technologies uh, for quite some time, but again uh, there are new uh, developments in the, in that area as well. Uh, so, uh, so when you take we need to talk about digital manufacturing, we have to talk about actually digital modeling first. Uh, the, so, digital modeling is uh, is the process of creating a computer model. Uh, uh, of an object that exactly uh, you know replicates the the form of the object, uh, and and we can uh, you know develop a, digi a digital model using a, a computer software uh, called computer design software. Actually, so there are so many uh, computer design software uh, that is available in the market today, including commercial ones and also free ones. Uh, and then also we can build digital models using laser scanners today like you know if you have a physical model already existing then you can basically scan it and then get a 3d model and then so when you have a digital model then we can use uh, this digital fabrication technologies to manufacture that uh, that part uh, so it's so digital fabrication is is a type of manufacturing process where the machine uh, used to fabricate the parts is controlled by a computer uh, and the, the geometry of the object uh, to be fabricated is defined by the uh, by that digital model that we, we discussed earlier so as you see here, here you have the digital model in the computer that you have built and then you have a machine tool uh, and then with digital control techniques you control the machine through a through a computer and then uh, you know you can end up with the uh, physical product uh, that is exactly uh, the same shape uh, like the, the the computer model or the digital model. So uh, that this digital manufacturing, uh, sorry, the you know you know you might have heard about uh, the the machine tools called the computer numerical control machines, and those have been there for about 30, 30 to forty years now. Uh, but now they they are uh we know the uh, the precision and the, the and the usage have increased of course and the price have come down a lot uh from uh, from uh, 80s to now and in addition to that the other uh you know other digital uh, techniques like the the additive manufacturing or 3d printing uh, uh again how uh, come to the for forefront in these days yeah in, in you know, when you think about uh, 3D printing or uh, digital manufacturing, sorry, uh, 3D printing or add additive, manu additive uh, manufacturing, that was also, you know, invented in 80s, but uh, there was no, uh, not much uh, uh, development on, on, on additive manufacturing until, uh, uh, until late uh, uh, 2005 uh, and, and, uh, since uh, 2010 there has been you know many uh, you know major enhancements to the the process 
uh, and now uh, we have come to a point like uh, we, you know we can uh, manufacture uh, functional part um, uh, in other words uh, the parts that we use in uh, aircraft are, you know some of the parts are directly uh, uh, manufactured using the the 3d printers so we have uh, come a long way during last uh, decade or so in terms of this uh, 3d printing so now this digital manufacturing uh, with the 3d printing with the advent of 3d printing so it, it could trigger uh, 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 and you know it trigger innovation worldwide and uh, it could provide uh, opportunities uh, for everybody towards prosperity and and also it definitely uh, you know improve the accuracy of the the products that we that we want to manufacture and uh, it, it helps to eliminate mistakes and uh, and uh, most importantly um, it provides greater flexibility uh, uh, to customize any product uh, uh, for the uh, you know in, in other words actually uh, the uh, the producer and the consumer may be the same person in the future uh, with the advancement of the digital manufacturing and that means we, we can we can think about some personal fabrication in the future future with the advancement of uh, uh, 3d printing and then so many there there are so many other uh, you know um, uh, things that we can highlight like uh, it, it can reduce product cost uh, and and uh, very importantly uh, we can collaborate globally uh, for product development uh, with, uh, you know with the with the digital manufacturing and with, with the digital technologies of course and then uh, you know it could uh, help to save the planet and in fact save your life uh, as well when i say save your life the digital technologies have been uh, used to uh, manufacture uh, uh, human organs like uh, kidneys so those are you know life saving uh, 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 technologies that that will be available to us in the future <laughs> all right so uh, these are some um, um, very interesting applications uh, uh, of 3d printing um, the you know all these uh, pictures that you see here these are real uh, li um, you know um, products that real products that are that have been manufactured using uh, uh, 3d printing um, as you can see from from cars to uh, the there's a house here the houses to very exotic uh, uh, products like lampshades and then very light uh, bicycles and then uh, the designer uh, clothes and also you know uh, this is actually a very exotic looking uh, Wiling, so that has been uh, that is not possible by to manufacture using conventional methods, but it you know it's only possible using this uh, 3D technologies. So this is again the same same uh, as some some exotic uh, uh, items that have been uh, manufactured using 3D technologies like this guitar and and you know very artistic uh, products. So. Uh, so this the the 3d printing is uh, it's you know is uh, you know will be used not only by you know engineers or, or technologists but will be but will also be used by the the artists uh, and the, you know in fact as you see here these these are very you know exotic artistic uh, you know figures uh, that were not possible to manufacture using conventional methods uh, but uh, you know 3d printing will enable you know any imagination to become uh, uh, a reality all right so you know earlier in in in, in my slides i talked about uh, internet of things uh, so uh, basically with the internet of things uh, you know we can uh, we can have a, a localized digital fabrication when i say localized that mean in in sri lanka or in, or in a, any other country we can have a, a, you know small groups that uh, that deal with product development and manufacturing uh, 
with the, with the collaboration of uh, you know other groups around the world so uh, and so the, the digital manufacturing technologies and the internet of things will enable that uh, that possibility in the in the future and uh, and also the the green energy production localized green energy production and global distribution that means like you know in sri lanka as as you know we have a lot of uh, sunlight and that sunlight can be used to uh, produce uh, you know solar electric power and you know one day sri lanka may even have more power than than we need and if that comes to that point of course then we can sell um, the uh, the electric power to uh, the other countries in the world uh, uh, utilizing this internet of things uh, platform so so you know somewhere in, in, in sri lanka we, we produce energy and then it, it may be used by somewhere in, in the us or somewhere else um, so so that is also um, possible with the internet of things uh, and then uh, that will the the iot uh, in, in short will will uh, provide uh, big data and um, you know many data analytic tools to everyone in the world even today now you know google uh, uh, google has a lot of uh, data analytic tools that are available to everyone uh, in the world free so uh, so that those are all uh, possible through the internet uh, and internet of things uh, uh, that that will be emerging in the future um, and then uh, um, you know with this new platform we will have many new and very effective uh, education uh, mechanisms and uh, and also uh, you know we will have a lot of global knowledge sharing and collaboration um, and uh, and then also, you know, when you have many more data, uh, then uh, you know we um, we can um, de design systems uh, by looking at a you know holistic view. That means when you have more data, then that means you have more information, and then you know you can uh, design better systems uh, in the future. So that's that, so the, the systems design uh, may be. Uh, uh, you know more more enhanced with the with the help of uh, internet of things uh, technologies in the future um, so uh, so these are some uh, opportunities and challenges to uh, the project managers uh, from uh, internet of things um, so uh, so some of the opportunities, and of course, this is not an uh, all-inclusive list. There are these are some you know major ones. Um, some opportunities will be like availability of massive information and uh, and and uh, you know very rich knowledge base uh, to make decisions. Um, and and then um, um, you know we'll be able to manage very advanced projects uh, uh, within small. Uh, Collaborative commons. Uh, collaborative commons mean like small groups um, who can organize things and then uh, you know uh, do uh, very advanced projects like uh, building, uh, for example, building uh, um, uh, solar cells can be done in Sri Lanka um, uh, by you know by having uh, these three D technologies and then. Uh, uh, Collaborating uh, with other, um, you know, experts in the world, um, and then of course easy and real-time communication around the world that like we are doing even now. And then um, there are many challenges as well. Um, so with these, uh, you know, emerging technologies, always there are new tools um, to learn. So that means our, you know, current workforce will end up with having inadequate uh, amount of skills. Um, so, so, you know, everyone has to, you know, get updated and, and, and you know, keep learning. Uh, so that's, of course, a challenge, actually, because, you know, learning, you know, continuous learning is not an easy thing, although it is the best thing. And then um, um, uh, there will be many um, uh, stakeholders uh, with, you know, the, the number of stakeholders may, may increase with the uh, with the information available through the IoT, we, you know, because anything can uh, spread around the world in, in in seconds, and that can uh, you know raise uh, eyebrows of many people around the world. Like uh, if you're doing uh, some 
you know engineering development and if if it is going to impact the um, the uh, the environment badly you know you're going to get uh, you know more red flags uh, pretty soon so the the stakeholder uh, a stakeholder uh, participation is going to be uh, uh, you know very high when the information is available uh, you know uh, in in a second also it will uh, it will uh, you know um, it will have you know language difficulties in communicating around the world uh, because you know we will have a connected world actually um, and uh, you know not everyone has, uses the same language and, and also uh, there will be a lot of high expectations from the from the people with the advancement of the technologies and also one other challenge i have not even listed here is the some some security challenges in fact uh, last friday um, in uh, many parts of the us uh, had a internet blackout the reason was the iot actually because through the iot devices the the hackers could hack into the computer uh, networks um, and, uh, and 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 then they could disable the internet uh, to a large um, you know large uh, internet users so that was a very um, uh, you know uh, a very um, uh, <coughs> sorry that was a very uh, um, you know alarming situation uh, that 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 faced uh, last you know by a lot of people in the in the us last uh, last friday um, all right now let's uh, um, I'm, I'm going to switch the topic a little bit um, um, it, any questions so far or anything to add Okay, let's wait. We have a little time also, so we can go faster. Yes, continue. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't hear quite well. Okay. All right. Uh, um, so now you know. We, you know, I, I talked about you know several emerging technologies, and uh, now when you when you think about these things, uh, these emerging technologies. In fact, in um, in the 1980s and 90s, when the or in, in other words, uh, let, uh, let me take back to 1950s. Like 19, in 1950s, when um, DEC, uh, DEC Corporation, uh, uh, when they made the, uh, you know, they were uh, one of the major corporations uh, uh, who uh, built a digital computer in 1950s. And uh, when they, uh, you know, they, when somebody interviewed there and asked whether these computers will be used by the households in the future, they said, you know, the CEO or the, some, some uh, engineer in that company said, uh, no, uh, there will be, uh, the, the house, households will never have computers. That was in 1950s, but in, in 30, 30, 40 years now, you know, we, we know the story, you know, a lot of people uh, in the world now have at least, at least one computer or more. Uh, but still, there is a huge uh, digital divide in the world. You know, although there are so many computers and uh, internet connections are available uh, to many people, still it's it's uh, the percentage-wise, it's about twenty percent if you take the entire world. So, uh, although these uh, technologies benefit the societies, uh, it does not uh, uh, benefit uh, a large majority of people. It it benefits uh, quite a, you know small percentage of people from all you know if you think that uh, if you if you analyze the uh, the history of uh, industrial advancement uh, i mean technological advancements um, the benefits has gone to a very uh, you know limited number of people um, uh, but now with this uh, third industrial revolution and the internet of things uh, we have an opportunity uh, to gain uh, more uh, you know more more than we than we had in the past. Uh, that is by, you know, organizing into, uh, you know, small communities and then, you know, talking about these and then learning and then trying to use the, not trying actually using these technologies from right on, right now on. And, and, and basically we need to uh, stay ahead in the, in the, in this uh, new, uh, new industrial revolution. 
so uh, uh, so with that idea the idea in the sense uh, you know giving access to these technologies to uh, majority of people in the world uh, a, a new concept was born uh, in 2005 and that is called the fab lab concept um, and actually the, the massachusetts institute of technology uh, or mit uh, um, developed that uh, that uh, fab lab concept in 2005 and then uh, they uh, uh, so I'll, I'll talk about fab lab uh, a little bit uh, next but uh, the the idea was basically to provide uh, uh, a widespread access to uh, modern means of innovation so the the, the idea of fab lab uh, was to spread the uh, these uh, new technologies um, uh, around the world and and provide that access to majority of people uh, so um, and, and and you know by by doing that you know you, you can of course uh, you can see a lot of innovation if you if you could do that uh, so that was the idea of fab lab so uh, uh, Jason, you have to finish in uh, eight minutes running out of okay fast. Yeah. yeah okay yeah i'm almost at the end actually um, yeah, I'll be done in five, four, five minutes. Okay, so the Fab Lab concept is uh, um, basically, um, uh, you know, uh, having all these um, advanced uh, manufacturing tools and uh, and and then uh, um, sharing of knowledge. Um, you know, basically that means uh, through the internet. Uh, we, if you can have uh, like centers called Fab Lab or uh, um, um, uh, workshops uh, of digital fabrication um, then uh, you know we can we can organize local communities to uh, virtually make anything of course but basically uh, we can organize and make uh, very advanced products and uh, so, you know when they started they said uh, you know in a fab lab you can find everything you need to build almost anything although it is just a you know it's a vision of course it's it's not not possible yet but I think we can, we, you know, they can get it, get get there in the future. Um, so, you know, with that Fab Lab concept in in Sri Lanka, we, uh, uh, you know, myself and and Chaminda and several others, uh, and also several others in uh, uh, around the world, uh, you know, got together through the internet, and we uh, uh, started this uh, uh, social enterprise called Fab Lanka. So, uh, so basically, they are idea is to uh, you know uh, promote innovation uh, uh, first of all we, first we need to uh, give the access to the technologies and and, uh, and you know, educate people and engage people and then uh, uh, spark innovation and uh, and uh, provide the employment and entrepreneurship uh, opportunities and uh, you know provide uh, enhanced manufacturing and basically uh, Create a maker society so that we can uh, manufacture anything um, that we need uh, in in the future. So if if we if we successfully you know launch the uh, the that social enterprise in the future, so that so we are still you know working on many things and then we are you know planning on many things. So so in the future, I think. Uh, uh, you know we, we can see more progress uh, in, in that project. I think Chaminda might have you know talk about uh, some of those things so i'm not going to um, uh, talk all, all about all those so basically as i said uh, so we want to make a you know uh, we want to establish a maker society in sri lanka through this uh, th through this uh, web lanka social enterprise all right so with that I, and that's all i have so uh, i think i i would like to take any questions so you know we can discuss anything if you have uh, any new ideas yeah, you can uh, remove the screen, I think. Let me check. No, no, you have, yeah, it's all right. You can be there. You can't see your face, maybe you have to uh, lower your, your camera a little bit. Okay, this is better. Yeah. Okay, so questions. Well, you are the advantage of Zoom, which is better than Okay,
quanto dopo uh, noi uh, in realtà So you talk about uh, comparison and the value of the So how 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 it is possible to transfer something like electricity from Sri Lanka to some other countries or US? How it's possible? Was it a question? I didn't hear. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. So, how is it possible to transfer something like energy or electricity or energy from Sri Lanka to some other country, US or somewhere else? Oh, to, oh, through the okay. So right now we cannot do that, but uh, that that's the uh, the idea of in um, Internet of Things. So basically, uh, um, the uh, the energy, I mean, that's, that's just a concept right now. There is no mechanism built in, but that's, uh, that's one part of the industrial internet where you can have devices uh, that, that are connected to the internet. Um, the, I mean, devices in the sense, the, the energy generation devices. And that will, uh, um, you know, transfer the energy um, through the internet um, to, to any part of the world. So, so you can buy through the internet, but that's as I said, it's it's not available right now. But we are now trying to do the grid connection to India. That's not So it's not just number one patient says future. Yeah, but now we are talking about something your national market for energy. It's also. Okay. Else? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the question is, uh, what kind of 3D printing application do you set for incorporation? Can you repeat it again? So, what kind of uh, IoT application or and also 3D printing application you set for incorporation currently? Oh, yeah. So we uh, we have uh, the uh, the industrial scale uh, 3D printers uh, like uh, the uh, the uh, I don't know whether you have heard about uh, uh, Strat it's Stratus and uh, and uh, 3D systems. And uh, and also uh, a German company called uh, EOS. Um, so all those, I mean, mainly we the for the jet engines. There are some parts uh, like uh, engine nozzles that are manufactured using the uh, the uh, the laser, um, um, you know, laser based uh, 3D printing. Um, and then uh, so the, those are. Basically manufactured by titanium alloy, so the so we can you know manufacture titanium products using three D printing, actually, uh, that the base based on the laser technologies. Uh, so those are being used in the the jet engines and also a lot of interior parts like the seats, um, um, the plastic parts in the seats, um, and uh, and the galleys and and then the laboratories. Those uh, plastic pieces. You know, uh, some of those pieces are being manufactured uh, in plastic using again um, um, the, the the 3D printers, uh, uh, basically used uh, by the, uh, the sorry, uh, we call FDM. That mean uh, uh, the uh, uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, <coughs> FDM mean like uh, the deposition of material, uh, you know, uh, layer by layer. So, so th with those techniques, techniques we can, um, um, you know, manufacture plastic parts and that have been used in the in the airplanes, um, airplane interiors. And also, they in the future they will have a lot of. Uh, um, they in the sense the Boeing is going to provide uh, the CAD models to the, the airline customers so that they can uh, you know print 
it, the, themselves, like many, many parts. But currently, again, the, the usage is limited, but, uh, you know, we are mainly using it for um, um, interior parts uh, most of the time, but then in, in terms of jet engines, there are some uh, small, uh, very high uh, efficient um, uh, uh, flow nozzles uh, that have been manufactured by the, the, uh, the 3D printing using the laser uh, uh, laser technologies. But you said creation last time you are working for a division or something which we learned to 3D printing research or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's basically, uh, that's, uh, I'm, I mean, uh, not purely on the, uh, the technical side, but uh, what we, what we are trying to do is, um, like, uh, when you provide the data, like the, the 3D data, the, uh, uh, customers and and also uh, like other suppliers that produce the parts for their planes um, you know what is the the uh, the the data formats that we can provide them you know right now we have uh, only one data format called STL but then we are uh, uh, that you know the STL can be used, you know read by any anyone but uh, the Boeing company want to uh, you know keep um, you know, certain product data uh, like encrypted so that they don't want to give the STL files. So, so we are uh, trying to uh, uh, develop other data formats so that we can uh, sort of something similar to encryption so that only uh, uh, authorized people can have the access to the, to the 3D data. Otherwise, anybody will be able to manufacture those parts. Uh, and, and that will now no longer be proprietary uh, parts in that case. So that, that's the area I'm working on uh, right now. Um, not in the geo technical uh, uh, side of uh, but on the data management of on on 3D data. Okay. Any questions? What are the IoT applications? Oh, at Boeing. Oh, so we we um. We have a new uh, factory actually that uh, that that was built uh, about two months ago. In fact, uh, so there's a lot of uh, um, um, you know um, robotics. Uh, you know, although robotics is not new, of course, but um, most of you know until now, you know, the airplanes uh, for the airplane manufacturing and assembly, we did not use robotics because of the because of the, of the large structure of the airplane. It was difficult to use robotics, but now. Um, now we are going to use it now for the the we are going to collect a lot of data that these uh, the you know uh, robotic corporations provide and then um, those data um, w you know will be uh, will, will be collected and then fed for data analytics so that we can improve the the process so that the, the IOT uh, part comes in uh, in terms of the, the data collection from all these um, you know, uh, uh, robots and then doing the data analytics. Uh, so the basically robots are like all connected to the, the industrial internet or the, uh, uh, the IOT. And then that feeds, uh, you know, large amount of data now. And then that data has been analyzed, um, I mean, it's been analyzed and then feedback uh, to, the, to the robot itself to, uh, you know, optimize their, their processes. So that's one, one major application. That, that we have today. Okay. Okay, so it's about the security challenge now when you have all integrated, all interconnected. There'll be uh, possibilities, as you already mentioned, for new attacks or new security threats. So, are we ready uh, to have our uh, Internet of Things as a way of life based on those issues? It's actually about internet security companies are being up for What's that? The internet security providers have been are they here last minute? Are there firewalls in the developer already? Okay. What are the mechanisms that they have been there? So, are the security experts are? Ready to uh, clear 
uh, this team to operate uh, what are the mechanisms to ensure the security is there or security is assured yeah yeah I'm, I'm i'm not a security expert but there is a you know there's a big group working on the security side only and because it's a it's a major concern of course otherwise i mean if you don't have the secured network then um, finally we will not be able to use it uh, but um, so there is a, there is a lot of investment a lot of money being put in there for the for the you know for uh, developing a lot of security protocols and, and mechanisms. So I, I don't have much uh, information on, on that side. I don't deal with the, the secret side at all, of course. But, uh, uh, but my, you know, as I said earlier, I, I'm working on developing a, a proprietary um, uh, 3D, uh, uh, 3D printing uh, file format. Uh, but that, that, uh, that is again, it's a, it's a different data format that will not be shared uh, uh, publicly. Um, but uh, in terms of security, that is, uh, I mean, security will, will be um, involved with that also. But, you know, I personally don't have much experience on the security side, but I know there's a lot of investment going on uh, for the, the IoT security and, as, as you know, internet security is also like that. But IoT security is more serious because any small device like a, uh, like, uh, a thermostat in a, in a house is connected to the internet and that can be used to hack actually uh, you know that can be used to hack in many many other servers and devices so so it's very risky uh, when the iot becomes more more bigger so so security will be a major major investment area and, and it, it is it is now although i don't have any technical information or technical knowledge on that okay thank you gration now it's going to be a very interesting discussion, but let's continue. However, given the lack of time and also our schedule here, I'm sure Gretchen, it's a very late night. Huh? What is the time? Uh, yeah, two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning, so yes, it's late. So thank you very much for joining, particularly on your weekend. I know it's very difficult. We wanted to connect some more people, but the only one who was willing to share your expertise with us. So thank you very much. We'll be in touch. We try to also communicate with them about our project and maybe uh, uh, invite those guys to contribute. So thank you very much. Have a nice weekend from Colombia. Ciao. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and thanks for the, the opportunity to talk to you all. Right. Okay, ciao. Right. Enjoy. Okay. Bye.